Hey guys, I'm really excited to show you today a door I made uh, with really cheap materials uh, and, it, and it can open and close. So that's just really cool. I wanted to, I'm excited to show you this uh, project today. It's going to be in two parts. Uh, I'm going to do the crafting and then the next video will center on the uh, finishing up and painting. But you might have noticed something a little bit different about DM Sky today. I do have new glasses. Uh, these are actually wooden frames. Um, we have a local crafter. Uh, I live in Ohio. We have a local crafter in uh, Yellow Springs uh, called Featherwood Frames who made these frames. I really love them. Just picked them up. Um, so yeah, that's why it's, the DM Scotty has a different look. So without further ado, let's go to the table and start crafting those super cheap doors that open and close. To uh, start the project, I had to make the door first. So I took a piece of thin cardboard. This is about half the thickness of regular cardboard. And I cut an inch uh, wide by an inch and a half tall. And you can see I have a toothpick up next to it for scale. But I'm going to use that toothpick in the, in the project. Or actually, I'm going to use several. So what I did was I cut the corrugation on the bottom and the top of the door. That way I can glue the toothpicks to the side. So I glue the toothpicks to the each side of the door and uh, this will help uh, to make the door be able to open. After the uh, toothpicks had glued onto the side of the door, I cut them uh, flush. So I cut the one that would be the outer edge of the door flush and then I left a little bit on each end uh, of the one where it would pivot. My next task was to do the frame of the door. So I cut strips just like you would for a dungeon tile. You want to make sure that the corrugation runs the length of the strip and not uh, against it. Uh, I cut these a uh, quarter of an inch wide and these will be the frame for the door. What I did for the top of the door was I took a piece of the strip and put it up, up the top of the door and uh, to measure it and uh, made sure that the peg fit into the corrugation the way I wanted it. Then I marked uh, the edge of each piece so it would be a quarter of an inch overlap so I could make the frame of the door. Since each uh, edge of the door uh, was, was taken care of by the toothpick, the outer edges, I, that left me at the top and the bottom. So you can see in this pick, you can barely see, I took a very thin uh, cardstock, uh, the kind you run through printers, and cut a eighth of an inch strip and cover the top and bottom of the door. You can see here that I've assembled uh, the frame of the door and I just used a little bit of uh, uh, glue gun glue to uh, glue those in place. Then I did a little bit of detail to the frame. I cut some triangles, uh, some squares, uh, and then cut them in half and to make triangles to cover the edges of the frame there. Uh, so that would, uh, and it would also give it some strength, it would reinforce it. I also used a piece of very thin cardstock, which is the cardstock that you can run through printers, and I cut just a eighth of an inch strip and then ran that around the frame of the door. Now when I'm gluing this, th these kind of mini strips like this, I really like to use the white glue because the hot glue can just be really a mess when you're trying to work with something that small. So. I prefer the white glue because when you're gluing to cardboard or cardstock, it draw it sets up really fast, so it's it's pretty easy to do. You just hold it for a minute and it's good to go. Now I needed a base for the door to pivot on, right? So here's the finished door, and so I took a piece of the thin cardboard and I cut it a half an inch wide and measured um, halfway between, and you can see that I've taken a. a a probe and poke through the um, the place where I want the door to uh, pivot because I need the extra space for it to rest. So it's it's probably easiest just to take the piece and put it up against the door and then then poke then mark it and poke the hole. But anyways, this will be uh, the piece that the door will pivot on. You can see in this picture the pivot point um, goes up into the frame. And the frame has a little more leeway than the base is going to have, so I'm going to have to trim that bottom peg 
um, so it doesn't stick through the bottom of the base because it's a lot it's a lot thinner than the top so go ahead and cut that before you apply it to the base next I ran that thin uh, cardstock around the edge of the base and it's kinda hard to see here with the, the yellow pad but um, it's running around that base I then took my uh, small glue gun and very carefully uh, I insert the door into the frame and then very carefully put glue on each of the uh, the frame edges and glued it to the base. Uh, be really careful because you don't want to put too much glue and glue it to the to the door. The door won't open. Um, you can really make a mess. So be very careful when you apply this. So here's the door uh, standing up on its own and then I, I uh, did a test open you can see there. So that works great. The pivot really works well. Here I have simply added some white glue to the edge and that will just reinforce the, uh, the hot glue that I've already applied. I like to do that with, uh, with pieces that are uh, narrow like this and stand up. Here's the completed uh, door and frame but I needed to add some detail to the door so I cut a couple of thin cardstock bands that I'll use for the door and then a, a little bit of a thicker cardstock um, area where the handle will attach. Now the uh, bands, I made them a uh, half a centimeter, um, and I could have applied these to the door before I completed the project, but I just was so excited to do the door, I wanted to see how it worked, so I, I ended up applying them after. You can see here the bands and the door handle area applied. Now um, I used the thin, the very thin cardstock because I found it was the thicker stuff would uh, rub up against the frame and uh, impede the opening of the door so this solved that problem but it still gave me some detail. Hey crafters I hope you found this vid uh, informative as well as a uh, super easy and cheap way to do uh, doors that open and close. Uh, make sure to uh, give old DM Scotty a like if you like this video. Uh, also check out uh, my uh, Facebook page and uh, which are in the description and the um, my forum I uh, have a lot of great crafters on those, and we, uh, talk, we talk about crafting all the time, and we'd love to have you join us. So, uh, I'll see you next time. Never you worry, crafters. DM Scotty will be back with the next vid to show you how to paint this door.